network map differs from any other in two distinct ways. Firstly, it should not have terminals or pattern buffers. Secondly, it has to cope with the continual regeneration of players as they are killed and re-enter the level. The first issue is a simple map making problem. The second, however, relies on making weapons appear continually. This process is governed by the Set Item Parameters option under the Special menu. When we choose item parameters, we're presented with this dialog box. From here, we can specify the parameters of any object on our network map. For example, we can choose Plasma Pistol from the Type menu and set an initial count of three. This means that when the network game begins, there will be three pistols to be found. We can also set the minimum count to, say, two pistols, which means that there will always be two pistols in gameplay, either in use by a player or on the ground. Likewise, maximum count limits the total amount of plasma pistols available at one time. If we like, we can specify a total number of plasma pistols available throughout the game. In this case, if we enter 20, the plasma pistol supply will be exhausted after a total of 20 pistols have been generated by the game. We can also tell the level to generate an infinite supply of the weapon by clicking on Infinite Available. The Appearance Percentage box allows us to specify how quickly new weapons will appear, especially important after existing ones have been removed from gameplay by dying players. The percentage refers to the probability of the weapon appearing in every one second cycle. If it is set to 100%, a new plasma pistol will appear almost immediately after one is removed from the game. If it is set to zero, a new pistol will never appear. For more prized items, like the missile launcher and flamethrower, a lower percentage is often used to make the item a rare find. Finally, we can choose random location to add variety to the level. Instead of appearing at the same place time and time again, weapons will show up randomly throughout the level. The use of random location calls to for the need to specify smaller polygons, such as window ledges, switches, and rechargers, as item impassable. Otherwise, the level will place objects in these locations, some of which may not be attainable. If we select the polygon type option from the view menu, we're presented with a color-coded guide to existing polygon types. To make polygons item impassable, we choose that option from the floating polygon type window and click on the desired polygon. If we want to use the level to play King of the Hill, we're also going to need to specify a hill. To do this, we just need to select Team Hill and apply it to the desired hill polygon. Finally, it is extremely important to place eight player locations on the map. Using the Skull tool, we can simply click on a desired location and add a player. Each of the eight players' colors should be set to random so that the players are reincarnated randomly among the eight locations. If not, a red player will continuously reappear in the same location, which can often be quite a drag. After we've completed this step, we can merge our map and make it playable. A level, once completed, should always be merged. The merging process pre-calculates platforms and other areas of the map and makes it slightly faster, and gets rid of the annoying, not made with Bungie's tools, startup message. For specific instructions on merging your map, please see the Forge Manual.